always like the computer, the batteries are out. Oh, now it works. So you push some button, that it works. All right, so um, we, we wanted to talk a little bit about the collaboration between um, art and science. Um, just a few, a few ideas, and maybe if anybody has any comments or questions, I guess we, we have a little time to, to take those. those. But basically, um, when, when Kerry and I met, Kerry, we had a, a few conversations about what do artists do and what do scientists do and how is that similar and different. And there was one, there was one uh, statement that Kerry made, <laughs> he's smiling because he knows which one it is, that stuck in my mind and we had a, a fair amount of discussion about that issue and that was the, that was the, the moment when, when an artist looks at an event or uh, uh, something in the world and gets inspired to do something. Um, you know, oftentimes, depending on what type of artist and what type of work and, and all kinds of things, different things come out of it. And you don't always know what's going to come out of it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it means something blue, sometimes it means something red. In other words, it doesn't, artistic cre creation doesn't always follow the same model that, than scientific, that scientific uh, discovery follows. And um, I think uh, it was interesting um, uh, for me to work with a scientist who clearly is, in, at least in my opinion, is, is used to follow a very disciplined mm, method. Um, uh, and something is supposed to come out of the, at the end of the process and something comes out at the end of the process. And I knew that I couldn't promise that. I knew I couldn't offer that. I, I, I knew that we could shoot for this type of documentary or this type of work, but um, I couldn't really promise something super, super tight. And at first I thought, well, this is not gonna work out because Kerry really wants something, you know, nailed down from the beginning and, and I was wrong. Uh, I think after the conversation went on, uh, Kerry, to my surprise, said, uh, well, you know what, it's okay, whatever you do is okay with me. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he's saying that because we just had this argument about how unpredictable artists can be sometimes and how meaningless their works of art are sometimes to scientists or to non-artists. And But here we had a situation where open collaboration was established from the beginning. And that, that I think was really the, the key that, that triggered this whole project. And that's, I think, why uh, the, the students got so engaged with the project because we, we were really given a lot of freedom and, and uh, I think that was a really cool thing. So thank you for that. What I was smiling at was I thought I was gonna tell a story about how I hated a piece of abstract art. Yeah, is that the story you were thinking of? I, I was telling a story about how I was in Aspen, Colorado one time at an art, art uh, uh, gallery showing and this person, a friend of a friend, had, had painted a picture. Uh, Vibeka, this is one of Kurash's friends. Uh, he, she had painted a picture uh, from Moraine Park and of course any geologist knows a moraine is a glacial deposit and, uh, and so she was doing this abstract of Moraine Park. Well, I looked at it and I thought, this isn't an abstract, this doesn't say anything quintessential about, uh, about Moraine Park. It should be about glaciers coming and going, and all she did was splashed a bunch of paint on the canvas, and this is just rubbish, right? And, uh, and so I was explaining this, to, I think, to Isaac one day over a beer or something, and uh, he was kind of offended, I think, or surprised that I'd be so, so vocal. And, uh, but but it, it illustrated for me something really important that, that, science, that artists, I think, don't that the general public doesn't get about the earth. And for, for example, the, um, the picture of the, uh, the peat lying on top of the co corals that we were about to cut in the, at, at Pulau Pechabella, which means Pulau Fragile, um, the, uh, if, if a, a normal pair of eyes looks at that, say an artist, and he sees, oh, I see tans, and I see blacks, and I see a dead tree, and, and then you know, does something with that, they're likely to miss the real quintessence of that scene because the real contestants of the scene is the coral grows, it gets thrown up in the air by an earthquake, the peats form, the, the great jungle grows on top of it, monkeys swing from the tree to tree, you know, and, and there's hundreds and hundreds of years involved in that. And when you reflect on that, if you know it, you know that history, you think, wow, uh, 
you know, you think poetic thoughts. You think how small man is, how, how little, uh, how long time is, and how little time we have on the earth. You know, great philosophical thoughts that people write novels about, right? So when I first came to see Isaac here at ADM, I was thinking, isn't there some way that scientific information can ennoble man through artistic media? That's basically what I was thinking. And the documentary, I think, is more or less, is more of a, um, it's a, a fairly straightforward exposition of a scientific process and the people who might get in the way of a natural phenomenon and so on. But there are lots of ways, that you, you, you artists, you express things in many, many ways, sculptures and painting and films and, and uh, poetry and, and so on. There must be a better way to, to get all this amazing knowledge about history and about recycling and re death and, and life and death and life and so on uh, to, to people you want to speak to in a way that makes them feel, wow, I'm a human being. I can understand this. I, scientists can help me understand this. So that's, I'm not quite sure why I came down to see Isaac here two years ago, except that I had some notion that that science wasn't really being communicated in a way that really ennobled man as much as it should. So we've started with a little documentary, and uh, we'll see what else happens. But we're fairly open-minded at the observatory. We are, I, our, Isaac now is an artist in residence, and and uh, part of his job is to, as an artist in residence, is to his production mode, where he's going to be doing a documentary like the Mayan volcano, and the other is a producer role, where he's going to be talking to students and trying to see what, what they might be interested in doing that somehow relates to the way the world works, the way the stuff we walk on uh, was created, and what it means for uh, understanding better what it means to be human. Don't quite know what that form that's going to take, but maybe if you have some ideas, come and see us. What do you really disagree about? What do you really disagree with me about? We love to disagree. So, uh, well, no, no, I think every, everything that, that Kerry said is, is um, really part of the process of establishing a collaboration between uh, an artist or an artistic mind uh, and a scientific mind. And I think, as, as Kerry mentioned, there is now uh, an artist in residence program at EOS, and I think the, the challenge for me, this first time around, is to find a balance between what I think is kind of art at the service of science, and that would be kind of the, the doc documentary style uh, project where we really use our communication skills and our visual skills um, and our ability to uh, create emotion to, to tell a story about science, how it works, how it impacts the, the life of people. And I think that's very important, and it should be done, and we're having a great time doing it. Uh, but I think that's only h half of it, or that's only some, some portion of it. I think there's also room for more personal works, uh, which are maybe more along the line of these abstract paintings that don't, are not directly related to the fault line or the, the data that you collected on the field. And this is really where where I think it becomes more challenging uh, f for an artist because you, you need to find uh, you know, that balance between your personal interpretation, your personal understanding of the topic, your own in personal worlds, and the topic at hand. And I think it'll be interesting to see how, how that develops. And you know, one thing that... Um, we find uh, is quite unique about this, um, and maybe you want to talk more about this, is, is the fact that um, here we are starting a collaboration in a very informal and experimental way. Um, we feel that it's a really special way to go about things, and it turns out that not a lot of institutions are doing this. So maybe you want to talk about that? I wanted to actually just uh, put something on the table here for Isaac. <laughs> what is it? It's a little mirror. Every time I go to a, uh, an earthquake aftermath,